All right, so I want to start off with a question, general question. I want you to think about the primary goal of a company. And I want you to write down as many points as you can that actually affect the goal of that company. So if the primary goal of the company is X, okay, what do we need to do to achieve that? Okay, so think about the primary goal first and then think about an example, okay, that helps us to achieve that goal. Or profit. Or profit. Okay, so you mentioned profit. Is profit the primary goal? Not always. Okay, profit shouldn't be the primary goal of the company. Okay, you said maximizing the interests of the business. What do you mean by interests of the business? Well, in general, to obviously make profits and be... Um, Again, you're focusing on profits. What's the primary no, goal? No, well, I'm saying in general, like the okay, general. Tell me more specific. Um, primary goal. Um, I don't know. What's the primary goal? Value or wealth for who? For the shareholders. Correct. Okay, so yes, shareholders are interested in profit, but shareholders want value. They want increased wealth. Okay, so you might have a company that is unprofitable in the short term, okay, but they're still creating value. Okay. Okay, so how are we going to achieve that then? Um, Do we accept I all projects? No. Why not? Because you first have to analyze if it's going to be, um, if it's going to bring value and wealth to the shareholders. Good. Okay, so the word budgeting refers to having a budget. If you have a budget, what does that mean? Limited resources. Exactly. Okay, so limited resources are going to have to then provide maximum value in terms of maximizing the owner's wealth. So if we have limited resources as a company, there needs to be a process of evaluating and selecting those long-term investments that are consistent with the firm's goal of maximizing all owner wealth. So we need to allocate those resources as appropriately as we can to make sure that we maximize value and wealth over the long term. So short term pain, but for long term gain. Do you agree? Okay. Okay, think about yes. it like going to the gym. Do you go to the gym? No. You don't? No. Okay, so let's say if you did want to start going to the gym, what would the what would the primary goal be for going to the gym? To get your body in shape. Correct. Yeah, to get in shape. Okay, to either build muscle or to uh, lose weight, um, and that would be the primary goal of going to the gym. So if we're going to the gym, do you agree there's going to be a certain amount of time? We can't spend the whole day in the gym, right? Yes. So in terms of limited time, that would be the resource. Okay, the only way you lose weight and get fit and get healthy and um, and build muscle mass is by spending time in the gym doing a particular exercise. Okay, and that's what we're trying to do here with capital budgeting. We've got limited resources being what? Cash. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, rands and cents. Okay, and we need to t we need to take that cash and we need to allocate it to areas that will maximize wealth. Okay, so if it's in the gym, if you're looking at losing weight, perhaps, you might be focusing your time on, on doing cardio. Okay, so running on the treadmill, cycling, and so on. Okay, if you're looking at building muscle, then you'd be looking at weights and, and, and exercise that will that'll build that particular area because that's the goal that you're looking at. Okay, from, from a financial management point of view, the goal is maximizing wealth, not profit. There are lots of ways to maximize profit that can actually destroy value. 
Okay. Okay, one example that you've seen before in the previous module is giving out loans. Is it good to give out loans or is it good to give out credit? Yes. yes. It's good to increase profit, but it's not good for cash flow. If you give everyone credit, that harms mm. your business because your cash flow is then going to be affected by granting out credit to your suppliers, uh, not suppliers, to your customers. Okay. Okay. What do companies consider when making decisions then? So now we know why they make decisions to maximize wealth. Okay. What must they consider? Well, what their resources are. Okay, besides resources, we spoke about that being limited. There's something else to consider as well. It's, that's, that's a bit more important. You can put that here as well in terms of resources. Obviously, we need to know how much resources are available, so that's fine. But what else? The money available. Okay, which is still resources. The employees. Still resources. I don't know. The risk. Yes. There we go. Okay. So that's a consideration when making an investment decision. Remember, risk and reward, right? Okay. What's the relationship between risk and reward? The greater the risk, the greater the reward. Okay. Good. Linear relationship, cap M. Okay. Risk and reward should increase. It should be directly proportional. Yes. So are all companies the same? No. No. Companies have different resources. Companies have different products. They have different services. They're all different. Are they all at the same company life cycle? No. No. Some companies are starting out. Some companies are more mature. Some companies are being liquidated. So it all depends. Okay. Not all companies at the same life cycle. But no. we know companies all have resources and all companies will be spending those resources to maximize return over time to try to provide benefits. Okay, increased value. Okay, capital expenditure is the outlay of funds that will be expected to generate future return. Okay. Okay, so the motives. There are two main motives that we'll look at in this particular module. The first is expansion and the second is replacement or renewal. Okay, if I'm looking at expansion, why do people expand? Um, well, to access more people. It's to grow, yeah, to, to try build scale. Okay, so economies of scale, we're looking at growth, we're looking at expansion. Okay, so the motive then would be to purchase assets, non-current assets. Why would I purchase a non-current asset and not pay for expenses? Does paying for expenses maximize wealth? No, not no. always. An expense doesn't maximize wealth. Does a non-current um, asset maximize wealth? No. Yes. Which one? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Because assets generate future income. Good. Okay. Assets can be sold. If you're spending money on expenses, you're getting something immediate. So it's immediate gratification, right? Okay. So um, if you're spending money as a company on expenditure, okay? Expenditure. So if I'm buying stationery for the company, okay, if I'm buying, let's say, paper, okay, if I'm buying paper, does that generate any future economic benefits? Um, should. In what way? Is paper well, an expense or an asset? No, it's an expense. Correct. Okay, paper is paper. Paper gets old, paper gets thrown away, paper gets used. Okay, is there any long-lasting benefit for having paper? No. No. But if I invest in a building... Yes. Why? 
Well, that's where you're going to be operating from and you'll, it will generate income for you. Correct. Good. Okay, so that's the motive in terms of expansion. So buying more paper in the business doesn't expand the business. Buying more property in the business expands the business. Okay. Okay, so non-current assets are key for expansion. Okay. Right, then we've got replacement or renewal. When would we want to replace and renew? Well, the key is efficiency. We're wanting to make processes faster. Okay, we want to optimize the delivery of our products and services. Okay, so replacement or renewal is looking at efficiency. So do we want a new machine? So, for example, you're currently using a tablet, you mentioned, right? Yes. Um, how fast is the tablet's processor? Do you know? No. Okay, so... Um, okay, so let's think of. Okay, how much how much space does your tablet have? You can't ask me anything about technology. Why? Because I don't know anything. I just told them give me the best thing, and this is what I got. So. Oh. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So let me use a different example. So okay. So what have you replaced or renewed recently? Let me ask you that question rather than. Um, gee, I can't think of anything, to be honest. So there's nothing like, that you've replaced or renewed? No, obviously if you upgrade your cell phone, but... Here's an example. Perfect. Okay, so replacement renewal. So you've probably upgraded your cell phone recently, right? Yes. Okay, so how is your new cell phone different from your old one? Takes better pictures. Good. So is that efficiency? Yes. Okay, so it's creating more efficient be efficiency because you've got a better quality product in terms of being able to take better photos, being able to maybe use the internet, um, uh, maybe instead of your previous phone might have been 3G, your current phone might be LTE. So it's faster, it's easier to navigate, it might have a bigger screen compared to your older model. So replacement or renewal is is always looking at efficiency. How do we make our lives easier? How do we make those processes more productive? Okay. All right, and then the other would be things like advertising, research and development, consulting, etc. Okay, Eunice is going to focus on expansion and replacement. Those are the two that they're, that they're going to be focusing on. Okay. Okay.